Hello. In this introduction to the soft tissue reconstruction in the lower limb, we're going to look at some broad principles and theories on how one should approach this complex uh, soft tissue reconstruction. Today's advancements allows us to have very complex uh, reconstructive strategy for the management of lower limb injuries with soft tissue loss and damage. One needs to be very careful in choosing the option that we should have a practice in which we cause no harm, we do not make the patient's condition worse, and that we give the patients the options that are available and explaining in honesty what are the outcomes that can be expected. And this is the foundation of a good ethical practice. The following resources have been used in helping to develop this module on soft tissue reconstruction in the lower limb. Uh, you're encouraged to try and look at some of these resources to help you understand this problem. The most important aspect of managing a lower limb trauma patient with soft tissue involvement is to identify the problem very clearly and concisely. And this is crucial because until you have the problem identification resolved, it will be difficult to offer a solution. And in this process, one should also understand the list of constraints and limits that one has, either in the form of surgeon, patient, or the environment. Important to also understand the mechanism of trauma that has caused so as to predict the extent of the injuries and the various possible uh, complications that can be uh, found in the process of reconstruction. There must be an assessment of the structural uh, nature of the uh, limb in that what are we trying to achieve at the end, so to begin with the end in mind, and to assess what are the functional results that we hope to achieve based on our assessment of the limb at this current stage. Mathis and Nahai's paper was uh, instrumental in the development of the reconstructive ladder. Understanding this ladder is important as a reconstructive surgeon in lower limb trauma, but keep in mind that one needs to think outside the ladder especially in situations when the ladder is no longer present due to broken rungs. So it is important to be able to think outside the standard realms, especially in polytraumatized patients and in patients in which the soft tissues uh, may not be fully available for the various types of reconstruction. In assessing the problem, one needs to understand the various factors that can involve outcome from the anatomy of the injury to the patient factors, surgeon, therapists, and including the environment. Timing and time of surgery is crucial, and this has to be discussed and considered as one looks at the various options. The resources that are available in the form of equipment, expertise, experience, and the type of uh, energy that is available with the team that is going to reconstruct has to be considered and these are important uh, factors that predict outcome. One should also be responsible for the ethics involved in the management of these patients, especially in environments in which the cost can be borne by the patient. This has to be carefully evaluated and discussed with the patient in due, with due diligence so as to ensure that the patient has all the options in his uh, decision process. Aesthetics is an important component as sometimes we can produce severe disfigurement as a result of our complex reconstructive procedures in our attempt to save the limb. It is expected that you will understand the various types of tissues that are available to provide soft tissue reconstruction in a severely traumatized lower limb. The understanding of the principles of a random pattern flap as compared to an axial pattern flap and how an axial pattern flap can include a random pattern flap to increase its length 
and the use of fasciocutaneous flaps and the downside of fasciocutaneous flap and the role of muscle flaps with and without skin and the advantages and the disadvantages has to be clearly understood and how myocutaneous flaps can be quite uh, thick and produce their own problems as a result of that. Assessment of viability needs to be uh, taken into consideration early in the assessment of the patient and the reconstruction options needs to be then worked out based on this assessment. This re may require uh, two to three times explorations in, under general anesthesia to be able to assess the extent of the injury. It's always good to obtain second opinion from uh, a multidisciplinary team to ensure that we offer the best option for the patient. And remember, an amputation is an option. In generating options, it's very important to begin with the end in mind. You must be very clear in what you hope to achieve at the end of your reconstruction. There has to be priorities, and the priorities have to be clear in the form of skeletal stabilization, vascular continuity, uh, soft tissue cover, and ensuring bony union to occur. Holistic consideration has to be made to ensure that the patient is understands the complex journey that he will take to reach his optimal outcome at the end of the reconstructive process. And the patient must be in the center of all our decision making. We need to go beyond anatomy and start considering functional restoration, what we hope to achieve at the end of the day. And that is why one needs to think outside the ladder in generating options for reconstruction of the mangled lower limb. The requirements for reconstruction is stand generally we start off with the wound debridement, ensuring vascularity is uh, available and there must be adequate skin cover and the bone must be stabilized so as to allow for healing to occur and with skin we require good vascularity for bone healing to occur. The advent of negative pressure dressings have made significant differences in the way lower limb trauma with soft tissue injuries is managed. It is important that uh, all parties are involved in the communication and their multidisciplinary team approach to be taken in the management of these patients. Timing and type of reconstruction needs to be discussed openly with patients and the various members of the team and until we have a clear picture of how we're going to take that journey to provide optimal results, it is important that communication exists at all times uh, with the team and the patient and his family.